Welcome to Precalculus Algebra Symmetry Part 2, and here we're going to discuss what are called even and odd functions. So we talked about symmetry before, and we talked about x-axis, y-axis um, symmetry. Here we're going to discuss symmetry that um, applies to uh, when you're dealing with functions. So consider this graph here on the left. Let's say you plug in some value over here, call it x. And then the output, so if you go up to x, you know, if x is here and then you go up on the function, your y-coordinate might be right about there, let's say. This would be f of x, okay? Now let's say instead of plugging in x, you go just as far but to the left. So let's say you, you plug in negative x. So if this was 5, that would be negative 5. Or if this was 7, that'd be negative 7. The point is that we've gone just as far to the left as we went to the right. Now that would correspond to this point, and then if you went and saw the y-coordinate for that point, you'd see that the y-coordinate was the same as the y-coordinate for this point, which means that when you plug in negative x, you get the same output. And we write it like this, that f at negative x, right, the output at negative x is the same as the output at just x. When a function has that property, that when, that when you replace x with negative x, the function is unchanged, we say that that function has even symmetry. Okay, now what that means in the context of the previous video was that the point xy, let's say this was the point xy, that's on your, if that's on your graph, then so is the point negative x with the same y, okay? So when a function has that property, we say that it has even symmetry. Um, now, we're going to verify that a function has even symmetry by simply graphing the function. Uh, sorry, not by graphing the function, by simply replacing x with negative x and seeing if we get the same, um, if the function is unchanged. Okay, so let me take that back. We're, no, we're not going to graph the function. We're just going to go ahead and verify symmetry like this. Now, it turns out that you do use symmetry later on for graphing, but when you first assess whether or not something has even symmetry, you use this rule right here. So this is a very important rule. Let's go ahead and give it a little box. Okay. Now consider this function over here on the right. We're going to play the same, same game. That is, we're going to go over x, let's say, and then there's going to be some corresponding y. Let's write f of x. But then when you go over the same distance to the left, so if this was 5, if you go over negative 5, right, let's go to here and call that negative x. What happens is you don't get f of x out, right? What happens is you get, instead of going up, you simply go down the same amount. So what I've done here is I said, oh, if I went over x, my output was f of x. That's what I'm, how I'm denoting it. That's the y-coordinate at this point. But then if I go over negative x, that is to the left, the same amount that I went to the right, I find that my output is down here. Now what's important is that this is f of negative x, but what's important is that it's the negative of that. So if that was positive 2, this would be negative 2. So we write that in the following way, that when you plug in negative x, well, you don't get f of x. You don't get the same output, right? You get the negative of the, same, of the output you had earlier. So if you, if you got 2 before, now you're going to get negative 2 when you plug in negative x. So when a function has that property, f of negative x is the negative of f of x, we say that it has odd symmetry. Odd symmetry. Or symmetry about the origin. That's what we also say. So we say it's symmetric about the origin. Symmetric about the origin. And what that basically means for the graph in the context of the previous video is that if this is the point x, y, then what would the coordinates of this point be? Well, that point would be, let's see, negative x, right? But the what would the y coordinate be? It wouldn't be positive y, it would be negative y. So when a function, if x, y is on the graph, so is the point negative x, negative y. And that's the same as this, saying that a function has odd symmetry and verifying it using that rule. Now, people also say, so symmetric about the origin, that's another way of saying odd symmetry. And people also say it's a 180 degree rotation about the origin. So 180, 180 degree rotation about the origin. Now, what that basically means is that if you take this, gra this part of the graph and you rotate it 180 degrees, it'll fall on that part of the graph. 
And that part of the graph, if you rotate that 180 degrees, it'll fall on this part. So that's what we mean by 180 degree rotation. And notice over here, even symmetry basically means that this branch on the right, it's a mere reflection of that branch, or this branch is a mere reflection of that branch. Okay, so even symmetry, the branches look exactly the same across the y-axis. This has y-axis symmetry. And then odd symmetry means that we have, um, a, it's symmetric about the or origin and we have 180 degree, 180 degree rotation. Um, 180 degree rotational symmetry. Now it's kind of interesting to explore why that's the case. Let's go ahead and do that quickly before we go ahead and verifying even and odd symmetry. Let's go ahead and see why why that's the case, why this, this implies that we have 180 degree rotational symmetry. So if we start with a, let's say the x-axis, like so, and let's say this was the origin, so that would be the uh, point zero zero. And let's say we located a point in space that was right here, and that point had the coordinates x, y. And so let's draw a little ray or a line segment through those two points. Now, so this is sp specifically talking about odd symmetry. Um, now, if you have the point, n we have x, y, but we also have the point negative x, negative y. Now, the question is, where does that point lie? Is it here? Is it there? Wh why would it have to be on that line? Well, that line has slope. m is equal to, well, y take away 0 is y divided by x take away 0 is x. So that, slope, that line has slope y over x. And so if we have the point negative x, negative y, right, and we draw a line from that point through the origin, notice that that, point, that line is going to have the same slope. And if it goes through the same point, that means that we must have a point here that lies on the exact same line. In other words, if you locate this point here, negative x, negative y, these two line segments have the same slope and they, go, they contain the same point. So this must be one big line, like so, through those three points. So that explains why odd, odd symmetry, that is saying that f of negative x equals negative f of x, that explains why, if you have that, these points are, or these two points are on the same line. Now they're also, because you went over this distance, right? If you go that distance, we're going over the same distance the other direction. Those two distances must be the same. But notice that these distances, right? That distance is the same as this distance because they have the same y coordinate but just with a different sign. So those two distances are the same. These two distances are the same. And that means these distances, one, two, three, that distance, those two distances must be the same as well. So put that together that you rotate this line 180 degrees onto that line, but also this point stays at the same distance from the origin in that rotation. So that point ends up there. So you take those two things together and that's saying that every point that's on this line, when you rotate it, must end up have its counterpoint over on the other line. And of course, if, if you're talking about every point on a graph, if you rotate every point on the graph 180 degrees, it's going to have its counterpart on the other side of the graph. And so it's got to be at the same distance from the origin. So my point is, let's go back to the, the previous um, graph right here. My point was that rotating 180 degrees, the reason that this, tell, this tells you that if you rotate 180 degrees, you get a point over here that's on a line through the origin, but it lies at the same distance from the origin. And that's why we say it has 180 degree rotational symmetry. Okay, let's go now ahead and verify, like we're going to be doing in our class, when a function has even symmetry and when a function has odd symmetry. Let's do that now. So determine whether the functions are even, odd, or neither. So here's our first function. And the litmus test is always this. You always replace x with negative x, and, and you see what you get out. That's always your first step. So what do I get when I do that? f of negative x is equal to negative x quantity cubed plus negative x. And what do I get when I cube these? Well, it's going to be, or cube this. I get negative x cubed, and then this is going to be minus x. Now I can see that this isn't the same as that, but if I factor out a negative 1, I get negative 
right? The negative has been factored out, x cubed plus x. And I can see that what's in parentheses here is exactly what I started with, right? And what I started with is just f of x. So I'm going to replace that x cubed plus x with f of x. Don't forget the negative on the outside. So you have negative f of x. What does that mean? That means that f of negative x, right? We put in negative x, and what do we get out? We got out negative of f of x, and that means it has odd symmetry. We just verified this function has odd symmetry, okay? So we got this, and that implies the function is odd, which means that if you graph this, it's going to be symmetric about the origin, or symmetric uh, with 180 degree rotational symmetry. Let's take another one. Let's do the same thing for these two functions. So for this first function, let's plug in negative x. That's always your first step. And what happens when you do that? Well, it's 3 times negative x to the fourth plus negative x quantity squared. And we get, let's see, 3x to the fourth plus x squared, right? Because upon raising to the fourth power and upon squaring, the negative um, ends up giving us a positive. So I can see that this is exactly what I started with, right? So this is equal to f of x. And what does that mean? Well, that means that when you plugged in negative x, the function remains unchanged. That is, f of negative x is equal to f of x for this function. And that's why the function has even symmetry. That is, if you were to graph this function, you'd find that the right branch looks exactly, it's a mere reflection across the y-axis of, um, if, if you reflect the right branch across the y-axis, you'd get the left branch. Then finally, this function, let's plug in negative x. g of negative x is equal to 3 times negative x cubed minus negative x plus 2. And what do I get? Well, I get a negative 3x cubed and then plus x plus 2. And if I look at this, I see that, well, it's not exactly the original, right? because the sign is different. And if I go to factor out the negative here, if I just like I did in the pre, uh, two examples ago, if I factor out a negative, it's negative 3x cubed minus x minus 2. Now, I can see what's in parentheses is not the original, right? Because it has 3x cubed minus x, but minus 2 instead of plus 2. So what that means is that this is not equal to the negative of f of, f of x. So it's not equal to that. So nor is, th so this is not, this was not equal to the original, nor is it equal to the negative of the original. So I shouldn't write uh, f of x, sorry, I should write g of x. So negative g of x here. So my conclusion is this, is that g of negative x was not equal to g of x, right? I didn't get the exact same function out, nor did I get, nor is it equal to the negative of g of x. That is, it's neither even nor it's odd. So we say it's neither, right? It has neither even nor odd symmetry. And most functions have neither even nor odd symmetry. So this is probably the most common case. Okay, until next time.